Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. I hope everyone is doing okay. So a while back ago, it was a while back, I changed my channel so it's like we're in the kitchen and we're chatting. So I chat and then you guys reply in the comments. And I think this is a great video for that if you have any comments. This video is why should I stockpile and is this the tribulation or is this just the beginning of the tribulation or is this just a tribulatory period? Because one of the reasons some people um, stockpile is because they think it may be the beginning of the tribulation. So last night I, I watched a really good video. my frugal life when they make fun of you for prepping so um i don't know if any of you have had this experience no one's made fun of me but i do think you know some of the places i shop are probably thinking what is with this but um why to um stockpile why 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 you can just go to the food banks go to the food pantries get Get EBT cards, you know, everything's going to be fine. One of the reasons you stockpile food is so you don't run out of food and go hungry. What if, if you couldn't get any food at the food pantry and your relatives didn't have any extra food? So another uh, thing is, what if the food banks ran out of food? Third reason, you can go weeks to months without buying any food. So that lets you reduce your, your cost of living way down. You don't have to buy anything. Maybe just some uh, fresh vegetables and fruit, you know, a few dollars here and there. But not like a whole week or two of shopping. You can just eat out of your stockpile. And then if you do the stockpiling and this comes uh, becomes a way of life, you're always buying food really cheap when it's on sale for the stockpile and then you know you get better and better at it and you find sales and deals and you know pretty soon your food cost is almost nothing another thing is what if for some reason if we had a power grid sh shut down you couldn't get into walmart you can get into bonds. You just couldn't get the food in, out because you couldn't get in. Um, so, you know, in case you can't. Or another bad thing is what about inflation? What if the inflation just got so high that it was very, very expensive to buy food, but you had food so you could get by for a while until you could adjust to the inflation? Okay. And then eventually you get enough food stored up so that every once in a while, like last night I had to buy some chicken for $5, but that's the only chicken I bought. That's the only meat I had to buy all week for $5, and I still have uh, probably three-fourths of it left. Okay, so now, so a lot of Christians say, well, we're preparing for the tribulation. So you might be saying, well, I don't even believe in the tribulation and I think the tribulation is stupid. But we're gonna go into the great tribulation and trib tribulatory um, periods. Okay, I wanna show you what I bought. I was at Walmart and I found two dented cans of tomato soup for 75 cents and tomato soup is good because you can you know you can use it in your cooking or you can make a sandwich of soup also i found in walmart they have these sardines and these are probably one of the better sardines so it's only five ounces but these are the good ones so if you ever had to eat them i usually just eat them on crackers but you can't eat them with rice and then i bought a can of mushrooms and a can of green chilies and I also bought some uh, mushroom gravy a packet I'm gonna make something out of it tonight and then I bought this 
um, case of of top rum and the creamy chicken because I couldn't find this stuff for the longest time. So I go to Walmart every day and I saw they had two cases and so I was a resource hog and I bought one case. But what you can do with this stuff is you can crack an egg and you can uh, mix your egg with one tablespoon water and stir that around in your top ramen. And so I think I bought 20 for $5, they're 18 cents each. So you're not gonna be going without food. Okay, so now let's go into, uh, is this the tribulation or is this just a tribulatory period in time? First of all, what is a tribulation? Exactly what does that mean, um, a tribulation? A cause, so the tribulation has a cause. Something's causing the tribulation of great trouble or suffering, a state of great trouble or suffering, suffering, difficult experiences and problems. So, you know, that's a human condition. We were talking about that. If it's not one thing, it's gonna be another thing. That's pretty much true. But according to the Bible, at some point in time, a great tribulation is coming and that is signaling the coming of the Lord. So the non-Christians go, well, well, I don't believe that. Matthew 24, 21, for there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. That's the modern translation, the King James translation for then there will be great tribulation such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time no ever shall be so what's going to happen is there's going to be great trouble and suffering difficult experiences and problems and, and they're not going to be minor they're going to be so bad. In fact, somewhere in there it says, if, if they weren't shortened, everyone would die. If you haven't read the book of, of Revelations, you can uh, listen to it on audio on, uh, just on um, YouTube, and you can go to the modern translation if you want. So now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, it, this could be the Great Tribulation, but certain things have to happen. Now, this has not happened, thankfully. The sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. Stars will fall from the heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be darkened. Okay, um, I think that happened when the Lord was crucified, but that could happen again. So if that happens, most likely this darkness period is going to pass. So don't like freak out, run outside of your house, that night might not be safe. It's to be expected that the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give off its light and, and stars will far, fall from the heavens. So, so far we have not experienced this yet. All right, now this is the one we have not seen yet either. Revelations 13, 1 through 18. There will be a beast rising out of the sea, 10 horns and seven heads, with 10 diadems on his horns and blasphemous, blasphemous, blasphemous names on its head. Okay, some people say that the beast represents nations. And then some of the literalists, of which I am, say a literal beast with seven heads and ten horns will raise out of the sea. That means a beast. It will have, it will be a beast like a leopard, its feet like a bear, and its mouth like a lion. Um, in a lot of the Asian cultures, they have dragons with three heads. 
and to it the dragon will give his power and his throne and great authority so a, a now a dragon is not a nation a dragon is a beast so um, what will happen is these beasts if they are beasts and I think they are going to be literal beasts a lot of people don't agree but these beasts will be human like one of its heads seems to have a mortal wound so basically the one of the things I always think about this one of the things is when I was going to become um, an EMT on the first day of our class the teacher said if a person is decapitated do not do CPR on its head it's dead so one of its heads seem to have a mortal wound but it has nine other heads but its mortal wound will be healed okay a mortal wound means you're dead so one of these heads will basically be dead and when this beast rise out of the ocean somehow the world is supposed to have knowledge of this okay so if prior to uh, the internet you ever wondered how the world could this happen well the whole world could have knowledge of this event because of the internet okay but this mortally wounded head one of the ten heads will um, be healed by the power of the beast how it receives this it's possible that humans may try to slay the beast And so the entire whole world marveled and they followed the beast. They may follow the beast because it's in their best interest to follow the beast, or they may find this event so marvelous that they will just, they will, you know, worship the beast. They'll go, wow, this is a, this beast knows what is good. So the entire world marveled and they followed the beast, but there's an and worshiped the dragon. So a lot of people say there is no such thing as a dragon. Okay, if you look into art and not so, um, not so long in the past, there are depictions of Bible dragons and unicorns. And I find them very fascinating. I love to stare at them. So um, some people say that the dragon is the one who has been caged, but he will be let loose at the tribulation, which I kind of lean towards that. I think there is going to be an actual beast with ten heads, and there is going to be the dragon. And most of the power is given to the dragon, and the dragon will give power to the beast. This is what the Bible says. Okay, so now we have four figures that symbolize evils that are going to come on to us at the tribulation. These are horses. The white horse signifies war. So we're going to see wars unequal to the beginning of time. The red horse is famine and hunger. So that's why a lot of us stockpile um, in my own family, you know, they were driven out of Missouri by the militia and they had to come across the plains to Utah and uh, the, the starvation thing was no joke. And then the black and the white horse signify plagues and death. So we're going to be looking for war, famine or starvation, plagues and death. Okay, a plague is an infectious disease and generally the person will get this plague seven days after they're exposed uh, this is kind of interesting uh, you know how they're saying that the uh, incubation period of the COVID is 14 days I'm thinking seven now the definition the exact definition of a plague I mean a famine is extreme scarcity of food a lot of times brought on 
by a drought, but not entirely. Here are some other things that, that are going to be causing famines. So this is why we stockpile too in preparation for famines. We've got this massive worldwide population and so war, inflation. Interesting that inflation was mentioned right after war. Crop failure. All kinds of things can ca cause crop failure. Population imbalance. Otherwise, there's so much food and a huge population, and so they say it's an imbalance. Well, there's not enough food to go around. It's starvation. Regional malnutrition. So people could have food, but they would be malnourished to the point that they would liter literally starve. I could see that. I could see that. You have to have certain nutritional elements and and they have to be every day starvation epidemics and increased mortality okay now so this is the stuff we're we're watching for okay there's been um we have not seen, we have not seen the sun being darkened and we have not seen the beast. So, chances are we're not in the tribulation. That doesn't mean we're not moving towards the tri tribulation. And another thing is, and like people can like get their Bibles up and go, la, 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 okay. But um, we're watching for these things. Okay, the New York Times. Okay, I thought this was a pretty reliable source, and on any of the stuff I say, you can usually check it out on um, on under Safari. Just go under in Safari. Food crisis as drought and cold hit Mexico. Two million people without water. Cold devastated cropland. This is nineteen of Mexico's 31 states. That would be as if um, 25 of our 50 states had no water and food. And the expected duration is five months. So that's why I say if you had enough food for a year or two years, uh, you're gonna be able to weather these tribulations. Now that's a tribulation, no water. Uh, mainly, though, if if stuff like this does happen, you want to move out of that area. And that's probably what they're going to be doing. And where do you think all these starving Mexicans are headed? Well, they're headed to the U.S. Okay, now, another thing we're watching for is persecution. So, a persecution would be an act of harassing, oppressing a person or group of persons especially because of their identity. So a lot of people go, well, that would be uh, persecutions of Christians. Uh, that's true, and murdering of Christians, and, and murdering of Mormon women and children. But it, it says persecution, and it could be a religious, race, ethnicity, I'd say especially towards Jews, Political beliefs, we have we have extreme uh, division with this political thing going on. Sexual orientation, so if you see groups, religious groups, attacking people for their sexual orientation, that is to be expected, that's persecution. So, you know, religion, race, ethnicity, ethnicity, political beliefs, and sexual orientation. So that's what we want to watch for. Okay, so now I want to talk to you a tiny bit about these seas. So a lot of people think when they think of the beast will raise out of the ocean, but it does not say the ocean. It says a sea. So I looked up the uh, two oceans, were the Mediterranean and the Baltic, the Ariel Sea, that's in, in uh, Central Asia, and the Dead Sea. And then, so then we have the, the major seas, which are kind of like oceans, but they're considered seas, North Atlantic, 
South Atlantic, North Pacific, South Pacific, Indian, and Southern. Okay. So now we're, we're trying to figure out which sea, we're thinking about this, which sea would the beast most likely want to come up out of? So I looked up the most central sea is the Mediterranean Sea. Now that might be a possibility. It's connected to the Atlantic in the middle of the earth and it's the world's busiest shipping, uh, shipping routes. So this beast could rise up out of the sea. In the US, we have the Arctic Sea, which is the smallest sea in the entire world, North Atlantic, South Atlantic, North Pacific, Indian, and South Sea. Okay, so now a lot of us say Satan or the devil. He likes to be high, high above everyone. So most likely, I would say he will go to a, a northern region rather than southern. Okay, so in the North Pole is found the Arctic Ocean. That's the smallest ocean, not part of any nation. Russia placed a titanium flag on the sea in 2007. So Russia is claiming the Arctic Ocean or sea. Now, in the Bible, it makes one mention of where for sure Satan or Lucifer or the devil was and it was Pergamum capital city of Rome Providence of Asia Minor Revelation 2 12 I know where you live where Satan has his throne okay now where was this this was 16 miles from the Algean Sea on a, lo a lofty isolated hill okay so now the Pergam altar was moved to Berlin. The Berlin, Berlin collection of classical antiquities, Pergam Museum, Altis Museum, Berlin, Berlin's Mus, Muslim Island. So I said, oh, maybe there's a sea by this island. The distance between Berlin and the North Sea is 749 uh, kilometers 465.7 470 uh, miles so the beast might rise out of out of the uh, North Sea uh, also a lot of people are saying these are just like everyone's opinion just like this is my opinion but they're saying that the dragon is going to give power to Germany I think they're their uh, president or leader is a woman and a lot of people are actually saying that you know this is it this is a tribulation the beast is going to empower her and you know so that is all I wanted to say on the tribulation if any of you have good videos if you can leave it under comments we'll all watch it and if you want to um, have the audio just go under Safari and put uh, and that can be the entire book of the Bible if you want to um, you want to listen to the audio book and it doesn't take long when you're listening to the books okay you guys please like comment and subscribe and God bless you all